Hi everyone, Caitlin here. Um, if you hear, I have to whisper, I just put Grayson down um, to go to bed. So um, if I'm talking a little quieter, just turn your volume up a little. Um, I wasn't planning on making a video until I was eight weeks because I hadn't had many changes at all between the seven week um, to eight weeks. So I was just going to put seven and eight weeks pregnant together in a video. Um, but I did have a change yesterday. Unfortunately, I did have some spotting. Um, about 5 p.m. yesterday, I did have some light pink spotting and then TMI. Um, but like when I would wipe and like go inside a little bit more, uh, it was more bright red. So since it was a Saturday, I did go to the ER to get checked out. And um, the standard, I'm so used to having to go there with pregnancies and bleeding. That every, This is my fourth pregnancy and with every pregnancy that I've had, I've had bleeding scares um, or bleeding due to miscarriages. So I did go to the emergency room and their protocol there. Um, along with waiting in the waiting room forever. <laughs> we, I've been pretty sure we waited for almost two hours. Um, but uh, they initially do a pelvic exam, which um, mine did not show. I did not have any active bleeding uh, during the pelvic, exa pelvic exam when I first got there. And um, he said my cervix was closed. And... Um, they started my IV and um, they did my blood work and uh, my HDG level came back within normal range. It was like 83,000, um, I forget the exact number, but like 83,000 and some. So that is in normal limits. And then I did do an ultrasound last night at the hospital and um, my husband actually stayed home with Grayson and I just called my mom and had my mom pick me up and take me there. Um, she's really, my husband, I mean, he, he's involved, but like he doesn't really understand all of like the little details like I do of pregnant, you know, of pregnancy and all of the different things that should be happening and seeing and, and whatnot. And my mom really gets me and understands it. So for like my stress level and my sanity, I just have my mom go with me. So we went, um, she was with me and she came back with me for the ultrasound and everything. And, um, I know you guys probably remember this from Grayson's video, but they always, from my bleeding scare with her, they always like do like tons and tons of measurements when they just start out. And so like they don't even tell you until like probably a couple minutes into the procedure like, okay, I do see a heartbeat, whatnot. So, but praise the Lord, they did find a heartbeat and um, the baby was measuring right on track with yesterday, I would have been seven weeks, three days. And that's what the baby was measuring. And the heart rate was um, 150 yesterday. So, um, baby was looking good. They did find a small subchorionic hemorrhage or a small subchorionic bleed, uh, towards the bottom of my uterus. So right by my cervix, which, um, I don't know what caused me to bleed. Um, but that's what they assume it is due to. So at least we know the cause of the bleed and I do still take baby aspirin. So, I mean, that could be, um, that could also be a cause, and I also have a friable cervix as well, but nothing was touching my cervix when I bled, so I don't know. Um, if you if you have been watching my other videos, you would know it, with my last pregnancy, so my third pregnancy, I did, I don't know exactly to call it a large subchorionic hemorrhage, or a vanishing twin syndrome because I was told two different things and the ER I was told that I had a very large subchorionic hemorrhage which caused spotting with that last pregnancy but then in my doctor's office follow-up um, they thought that it could have possibly been due to a vanishing twin because my HCG levels were being funny they were like 
they weren't going up so rapidly as they were and they were going up like a normal singleton pregnancy then so I don't know what to what that was the last time but so this time it is a his or her words were a very small subchorionic bleed so at least we know what it's coming like what it's where it is coming from um I did have that a little elective ultrasound place that I go to I already had an appointment scheduled for today um, I actually scheduled it like a week ago and um, I'm pretty sure if I remember um, you have to cancel like give them a 24-hour notice of cancellation or you could possibly be charged for that appointment time so I already had that appointment set so we didn't end up canceling it and I invited my mother-in-law and we went down today and we did get to see the baby and um, the heart rate was measuring anywhere from 160 to 164 today and baby was also measuring right on track today at seven weeks, four days. So here is, here is baby today. I didn't get any pictures from the hospital. I'm gonna see what I'm even looking at. So there's baby. There is that line, that shiny line that you see right there is the subchorion, I think is what she called it. And, um, like you can kind of see like the little arms and leg buds going on so and like I said the baby was measuring right on track and if you compare like the reason why I like doing these elective ultrasounds especially since I've had the miscarriages in the past you can see the weekly growth and it just amazes me like the one on um, Obviously, I already showed you guys which one. This is the one from today, and this is a week ago. So, the growth just absolutely amazes me. And um, for the heart rate to, like, and the heart rate amazes me too, because just yesterday in the ER, it was 150, and then today it's 160, 164. So, um, that gives me hope that everything is going good, and um, at least I know why I was bleeding. Um, I'm not going to go into all of my other symptoms because I have had a couple new ones. Um, my main new one that I've had, I don't know if you guys can tell, but like, like right there, I've had the worst. My skin is usually pretty good to where I don't have to wear a whole lot of makeup. I have some, um, oh gosh, I can't even think now. <laughs> might have really red like splotchy skin without at least like concealer on and my skin has been so like it's dry and oily at the same time like I have really dry patches of skin but then right in my t-zone I have been so oily and I have to constantly like blot it throughout the day because my skin is just so oily um but that, like, that's my mainly my new symptom that I've had. So I will do a full seven and eight week update, probably coming this Wednesday, because that's when I'll turn eight weeks. So I will update you guys more then. I just kind of wanted to give you the um, scoop on the spotting, but also to let you know that I am still doing okay and baby is still thriving and doing just fine. So I will talk to you girls later. See ya. Bye.